the Dead Sea has just become the focus of a remarkable event that many believe to be the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy, leaving Christians around the world both stunned and in awe. This development has reignited age-old discussions about biblical predictions, divine intervention, and what it all means for the future. But what exactly took place, and why has it captured such profound attention? What could these signs indicate about the days to come, and how might they align with scriptural teachings? Before we explore these intriguing questions and uncover the deeper implications behind this phenomenon, we encourage you to subscribe and join us in spreading the message of God far, far and wide. Together we can share this revelation with others, bringing more light to these extraordinary times. Now, let's delve into the unfolding mystery of the Dead Sea and the prophetic possibilities it might hold. The Dead Sea, known for its extraordinary landscape, is also home to a growing number of massive sinkholes. These fascinating geological formations are the result of a process where fresh water seeps into the ground, interacting with the salt and silt layers beneath the surface. This mix causes the salt to dissolve, leaving behind large, gaping cavities. As the salt melts away, the ground above gives way, creating a hole that can reach an impressive size. This phenomenon isn't limited to the shoreline. Some sinkholes are even forming underwater, hidden beneath the sea's surface. Along the banks, driftwood wood, bleached white by the harsh environment, piles up like old bones, adding to the eerie, ghostly ambiance of the landscape. If one could imagine water bodies as ghost towns, the Dead Sea would undoubtedly take the lead. The Dead Sea holds several superlatives, it is the lowest point on Earth, situated at over 400 meters below sea level, and is known as the hottest region in Israel. True to its name, its waters are inhospitable to physical life due to the high salinity. The intense salt concentration, about 10 times that of regular ocean water, makes it impossible for fish and other aquatic creatures to survive, turning the sea into a desolate yet mesmerizing place. However, its name might mislead those who think a visit would be a disappointment. On the contrary, the Dead Sea's stark and surreal beauty leaves a lasting impression on those fortunate enough to experience it. There is truly no other place on Earth quite like it, where nature's forces create a spectacle that is both stunning and unsettling. The process process behind these sinkholes is fascinating in itself. As fresh water from underground springs rises up, it dissolves the thick salt layers, weakening the structure beneath the surface and pushing through the silty soil. This underground activity eventually causes the ground to cave in, forming the sinkholes that dot the area. While this might sound like a natural catastrophe, and indeed it poses significant risks, there is an odd allure to these formations, they resemble tiny, hidden oases in the midst of an arid, salt-covered landscape. The minerals left behind by the dissolved salt often stain the sinkhole waters with vibrant hues, creating patches of green, turquoise, and deep blue against the otherwise stark, barren shoreline. This strange interplay between creation and destruction often offers a rare, almost poetic beauty. Yet the emergence of these sinkholes has brought serious challenges for the region. The unpredictable nature of the ground means that some of the most active and touristic areas around the Dead Sea are now under threat. Beaches and roads that were once popular with visitors are being shut down, and safety concerns have become paramount. As the sinkholes appear with increasing frequency, they to destabilize the surrounding terrain, making it risky for people to explore or even pass through certain areas. This geological instability has also made any new construction projects in the region nearly impossible. Also, insurance companies are unwilling to cover potential damages, deeming the area too dangerous for investment. Consequently, the local economy, which once benefited from tourism and development, faces significant setbacks due to these natural occurrences. Yet amid the challenges, the sinkholes offer a surprising twist, a glimpse of life reclaiming what once seemed lost. These depressions, once thought of as dangerous voids, 
have become unexpected sanctuaries for a range of flora and fauna. Around the edges of some sinkholes, lush greenery has taken root, creating pockets of vegetation in an otherwise, otherwise arid landscape. Even more astonishing are the reports of fish being spotted within the sinkhole's waters. If you enjoy our video, click on Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just donation, it is a blessing to support a transformative journey of Jesus. It appears that as the salinity decreases in some areas, conditions have become more hospitable for certain forms of life. This is a striking contrast to the lifeless waters of the Dead Sea itself. The chirping of birds, now more frequently heard around the sinkholes, suggests that these areas could transform into vital resting spots for migratory species. The emergence of life in the sinkholes offers a glimmer of hope and speaks to the resilience of nature. While the overall environment around the Dead Sea is still harsh and unwelcoming, these tiny pockets of life hint at a possible shift. They symbolize a delicate balance between decay and renewal, where nature quietly reclaims and adapts to the changing landscape. The Dead Sea, despite its bleak name and barren reputation, reveals an unexpected dynamism, showing that even in the most inhospitable places, life has a way of finding a foothold. The Dead Sea, a unique salt lake bordered by Israel and Palestine to the west and Jordan to the east, has long been known as a desolate body of water, devoid of life. Historically, scientists believed its extreme salinity nearly ten times saltier than ocean water meant that no plant or animal life could thrive in its depths. However, a surprising discovery in 2011 challenged this long-held belief when researchers uncovered evidence of life existing beneath the surface of the Dead Sea. This revelation has since sparked excitement and curiosity, especially following reports from breaking Israel news about freshwater ponds filled filled with fish and vegetation appearing along the lake's shores. This newfound life aligns intriguingly with prophecies found in the book of Zechariah, which states, on that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the Dead Sea, and the other half to the Mediterranean Sea. This will happen in summer as well as winter. Zechariah 14.8 Located east of Jerusalem, the Dead Dead Sea is directly tied to this prophetic vision of renewal and abundance, suggesting a future transformation that resonates with many people's hopes for the region. Additionally, the book of Ezekiel contains another remarkable prophecy that paints a vivid picture of life returning to the Dead Sea. Fishermen will stand along the shore. From En Gedi to Eneglem, there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. Ezekiel 47.10 Observers today are witnessing a glimpse of this prophecy coming to fruition as freshwater sources emerge along the shoreline, creating a scene that is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Experiencing these prophetic developments firsthand can be profoundly spiritual. The sight of colorful vegetation emerging as the Dead Sea revitalizes is not just visually stunning. It evokes a deep sense of connection to the land's historical and religious significance. And if we're lucky, we might even see fish swimming in these newly formed bodies of water. It's a remarkable contrast to the Dead Sea's current borders, which lie over 400 meters below sea level and are covered in a thick layer of salt, making it seem inhospitable to life. Yet, according to scripture, this area was once a fertile, well-watered land, transformed into a barren wasteland by the fire and brimstone that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, as noted in Genesis 13.10. The story of the Dead Sea's transformation took a fascinating turn with a 2011 scientific expedition conducted by a team from Ben Gurion University. Their dives into the lake reveal large craters on the sea floor blanketed in microbial mats actively releasing fresh water. This discovery serves as compelling evidence that the Dead Sea is not entirely lifeless, challenging previous assumptions and sparking discussions about nature's resilience and capacity for renewal. Despite the extraordinary nature of these findings, they have largely gone unnoticed by the broader scientific community and the media. This neglect raises questions about how we perceive and report on environmental changes, especially in regions steeped in history and prophecy. The revival of the Dead Sea speaks not only to nature's mysteries but also invites reflection on the deeper spiritual and cultural implications of life returning to a place once thought irreparably damaged. A Jewish American living in Jerusalem named Samantha Siegel made a remarkable discovery while exploring the Dead Sea shores. She spotted fish swimming in a freshwater pond, and while intrigued at first, 
The full significance of her find struck her later as she reflected on biblical prophecies. This realization filled her with awe, recognizing the scene as a powerful fulfillment of scripture unfolding before her. Adding to the surprise, she also noticed a family of ducks, symbolizing life returning to a landscape long viewed as barren. For Siegel, this illustrated a beautiful narrative of restoration, echoing prophecies of resurrection and renewal. In her reflections, Siegel highlighted the spiritual symbolism of the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth, where the salty waters create buoyancy, allowing people to float effortlessly. She compared this to God's presence in our lives, explaining that just as we cannot sink in the Dead Sea, we can find comfort knowing that God is always there to lift us during our lowest moments. This metaphor resonates deeply with those who feel weighed down by life's challenges. Have you ever wondered why so many tourists flock to the Dead Sea? The incredible salinity of the water creates an experience like no other, enabling visitors to float easily, even while standing upright. This phenomenon leads many tourists to lie back, read, or marvel at how a stick thrown in the water appears to rest on the surface. It's a surreal experience that captivates all who encounter it. Adding to the allure, Jewish historian Josephus recorded an episode during the 68 AD Jewish revolt in which he tested the belief that drowning in the Dead Sea was impossible by tossing non-swimmers into its waters. The result? They floated effortlessly. However, anyone who's been in the Dead Sea knows to avoid getting the salty water in their eyes or mouth, as it can be quite uncomfortable. The Dead Sea offers tourists an unforgettable experience. Many indulge in the local tradition of smearing themselves with the famous black mud, known for its therapeutic properties, before entering the brackish waters, which has also become a popular photo opportunity. Over the years, the Dead Sea has been called by various names, including the Eastern Sea, the Salt Sea, and simply, the Sea. Other monikers like the Devil's Sea, the Stinking Sea, and the Sea of Asphalt paint a vivid picture of its unique and sometimes foreboding nature. Despite its current desolate state, the area surrounding the Dead Sea was once lush and fertile, often compared to the Garden of Eden. Yet, biblical texts like Genesis 13.10, Deuteronomy 29.23, and Jeremiah 17.6 recount how divine judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah turned this once thriving landscape into a wasteland, symbolizing the consequences of moral failure. The destruction by fire and brimstone permanently altered the valley, creating the arid environment we see today. The surface of the Dead Sea is often enveloped in a mysterious mist caused by evaporation, evoking the image of smoke rising from Sodom's destruction, as described in Genesis 19:28. In a contemporary context, the Dead Sea stands as a powerful symbol of divine judgment, reflecting the consequences of sin and moral decay. Yet, despite its current desolation, Scripture promises that this ancient body of water is destined for renewal. During the Millennial Kingdom, when Jesus reigns on earth, a life-giving river will flow from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, bringing rejuvenation to the Dead Sea's shores. This promise is vividly illustrated in the prophetic writings of Ezekiel and Zechariah, who foresee a time when fishermen will once again cast their nets along its banks, symbolizing God's ability to restore what was long considered lifeless. Ezekiel, a prophet during the Babylonian exile around 597 BC, described a profound vision in chapter 47 of his book. He saw a river flowing from the temple in Jerusalem, winding its way down to the Dead Sea. This river would transform the salty waters of the sea into a fresh and vibrant ecosystem, sustaining a variety of fish reminiscent of those found in the Mediterranean Sea. Let's explore Ezekiel's words in 47-8-12, this water flows toward the eastern region and descends into the Arabah, the Jordan Valley, where it enters the Dead Sea. The water in the sea grows fresh as it empties into it. Where the river flows, countless creatures thrive. As this water travels, it transforms the saline water into fresh water, creating a thriving environment for fish and other life forms along the river's path. Fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Egleim. There will be places for spreading nets, with a wide variety of fish, including those from the Mediterranean and the Great Sea. Ezekiel's vision encapsulates a deep yearning for restoration, reflecting the Jewish people's anticipation of returning to their homeland and reconnecting with God. The revival of this seemingly lifeless body of water serves as a metaphor for a future moment when Israel's fortunes, once marginalized and forsaken, will be fully restored. Remarkably, 
we are witnessing signs of this prophecy unfolding today. Israel's economy is thriving, positioning the nation as a formidable presence on the global stage, mirroring the biblical promise of rejuvenation and prosperity. Many now believe that Jesus is the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, poised to fulfill these prophecies by imparting new hearts to the Jewish people and cleansing them of their sins. Just as the Dead Sea is destined for revival, so too will this ultimate restoration occur when the Jewish people return from the diaspora, having strayed from God's ways. This belief underscores the conviction that every scriptural prophecy will be realized precisely as foretold. Indeed, approximately 75% of Ezekiel's prophecies, or 81% of all biblical prophecies, have already come to fruition, often with striking accuracy. The final chapters of the Bible offer a vision of a river of life flowing from God's throne, a vivid image presented in the book of Revelation that sets the stage for the events leading to the second coming. We are currently living in a time of unprecedented significance, with the biblical theme of life emerging from death illuminating both the state of Israel and the anticipated return of the Messiah. What was foretold by Ezekiel 2600 years ago is now materializing, marking a pivotal moment in history. One of his most recognized prophecies, often interpreted as allegorical rather than literal, is in the process of becoming a tangible reality. In essence, the Dead Sea is awakening, and its revival carries profound implications for both the present and the future. The significance of this transformation extends beyond the physical, it speaks to the overarching themes of hope, renewal, and divine intervention. The Dead Sea's rejuvenation serves as a reminder that no situation is beyond redemption and that life can emerge from the most unexpected and seemingly desolate places. As we observe this miraculous change in one of the world's most unique ecosystems, we are encouraged to reflect on our own lives and the possibilities for renewal that lie ahead. Whether viewed through a spiritual lens or as a matter of historical significance, the unfolding narrative of the Dead Sea is a testament to the enduring power of faith and the promise of restoration. What will we call the Dead Sea when it comes back to life? If you're interested in learning more, just click the link on the left of the screen or check out the pinned comment. Don't miss out.